Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 3rd of March 2012. We have some monster sunspots coming over the northeast limb, and this new region produced an M3 flare yesterday. But first, our trivia question. This model of diversity shown here is a meeting of the NACA, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. It was the predecessor of NASA, who was founded on the 3rd of March. In what year? At the moment, we have only two officially numbered regions on the disk, regions 1423 and 1427. Region 1423 is an isolated large spot of a type that we have seen before does not produce very much activity. 1427 seems to be showing some signs of growth and we should keep an eye on it over the next few days. We have several new regions on the disk at the moment, but the star of the show is the new region in the northeast. The spots are huge and as we can already see, they are very complicated. This is not a returning region. This is a new region that has developed on the far side of the Sun over the last couple of weeks. It has already produced an M3 flare and a series of small C flares, and I suspect we'll have a lot more activity from it over the next few days. We have a small region emerging just behind region 1427 in the northwest. We even have a region in the southern hemisphere which has been a rarity of late. Both these new regions should be watched for signs of growth. Let's take a look at the development of these regions over the last 48 hours. First in the white light images from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, and then the images of the magnetic field from the solar photosphere from the same instrument. Now let's take a look at the flares, and in particular focus on the M3 event from yesterday. Here is the GOES X-ray monitor data showing the burst of activity that started on the 1st of May with a C3 flare, continued yesterday with an M3 flare, and since then has produced a series of four low-level C flares. Now let's look at the M3 flare in detail using the SDO AIA data, starting with the cooler plasmas and working our way up to the flare. The thing to notice in this helium-2-304 sequence is that the 50,000 degree plasma always seems to be falling down. So the question is, how did it get up there in the first place in order to be now falling down? Note how dynamic the Iron 9 171 angstrom images are. The interesting thing here is that about the same time when we were seeing the cool plasma flowing down in the helium-2 images, a whole bunch of iron-9 emitting loops disappeared. That is a good hint to the answer to the question I just posed. Next we move up to the active region temperatures of about 2 million degrees Kelvin by looking at the iron-16 line emission at 335 angstroms. Note how less well defined the coronal structures are at these wavelengths. Last we get really hot, going to 10 million degrees by observing the iron 20 line at 131 angstroms. Here you see the flare in its full glory. In most of these images you saw a cruciform structure when the flare was at its brightest. This is not real, this is an artifact of the way that these multi-layer optics are made. Now let us see if there has been any impacts from these events here on Earth. First thing to check is what is the situation with respect to chromal mass ejections. Unfortunately, some of the SOHO data seems to be missing, so it's hard to tell, but the M flare did seem to have a faint coronal mass ejection associated with it. But it is on the east limb, so it's unlikely to affect the Earth. Nor did the M flare seem to accelerate any protons towards the Earth. The solar wind seems to be declining in velocity, temperature, and density. Again, we are short on data with respect to the rural ARC, as NOAA is upgrading its server, and the data feed is down. We do have KP data, however, and that shows that the Earth's magnetic field is quiet after a brief unsettled period on the 1st. So what is my forecast? I think that this new region will continue to produce a series of C flares and possibly another M flare within the next 24 to 48 hours. From the GOES SXI image, you can see that this region is already interacting with a region to the south, which might make them both more flare productive. After these regions near the east limb have rotated onto the sun, I am not expecting much back for over five to seven days. The answer to the trivia question was 1915. If you would like to find out more about what's happening on the sun, follow the links in the description box below. If you like this edition of The Sun Today, and would like to see some more of my videos on this and various other subjects, please go to my YouTube channel, they're all listed there. If you want to keep abreast of the developments on the Sun as it rises towards solar maximum over the next few years, 
then you'd be welcome to subscribe to my channel. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now. And I'll leave you to enjoy some of these beautiful aurora videos compiled by NASA.